Lots of people go like, you're always talking about Cyprus, Cyprus, Cyprus. You don't talk about Ghana. So today, I'm bringing you the much-awaited gist about how to relocate from Ghana to the UK as a registered nurse. So stay tuned. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jane, I'm a UK RN, and today my guest here is called Savia. The much awaited video about Ghanaian nurses relocating to the UK is here today. Okay, Savia, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you doing, Sue? I'm fine. How is the weather treating you? It's so cold. <laughs> yeah. The weather is quite as cold, but we are managing, you know. Okay. So, please, can you introduce yourself to us? Oh. All right. My name is Savia. I am an RN in the UK. Um, I'm actually from Ghana. I came to the UK about a year ago. Yeah. I've been practicing as a registered nurse in the UK. So... After you're done with nursing school and rotation, maybe a practicing nurse or you are still at home, but you still you want to apply to work in the UK, what are you going to go through? Like what process are you going to go through before you can start the NMC registration? Okay. So basically all you need to do is to register for the IELTS or the OET. Those are the English language tests, which is required for you to be able to be registered with the NMC UK. And um, the IELTS is organized by the British Council. And so you can just go online, British Council Ghana, and you can register easily using your visa card. Um, when it comes to the OET, um, I, I just heard that uh, they, they are now writing it in Ghana. Um, I think um, you made a video about it last week. Yeah, yes. so, if you information about the OIT Center in Ghana, I will leave the, the link in the description box so you can go back to the previous video and have a look at it. Yes, so those are the two um, English language tests which is required. And um, with the IELTS, you you will have to um, sometimes prepare. It, de it depends on you. If you are, if you think you are, you can be able to teach yourself. You know, I taught myself, but I mean, not everybody can teach themselves. Yes. So yes. So if you if you 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 assess yourself and realize that you can't teach yourself or you will need help, then you can register with uh, private teachers who can take you through and bring you up to speed so that you can be able to write it successfully. So basically, that is what you will need. So you will need a test score of 7.0 for the IELTS. Um, for the OET, I think. But, it's um, a B in reading, in speaking, and in listening, and a C plus in writing. Oh, OK. Okay, I'm not so familiar with the OET because I didn't write the OET. But yes. for the IELTS, for now, you will need a 7.0 in um, re reading, a 7.0 in listening, um, a 7.0 in speaking, and then a 6.5 in writing. So yes. anything not less than that will give you the mark. Yeah. So when you are done with the IELTS and then the OET, then you are ready to register with NMC UK. So with NMC UK registration, you just go to their website um, and then they will, they will redirect you to NMC online where you can be able to start your registration process. And um, you will need your school certificate, whether it's a diploma or a degree. And then you will also need the NMC Ghana certificates as well. 
and then you need to ensure that your team is um, renewed and updated you know and then from there you'll be made to pay an amount of money for validation and then you, after paying that money for the validation you have to come back to nmc ghana and then with nmc ghana you also pay an amount again for validation as well that is where the clearance comes in so that if you went to the university straight away or you went to a private nursing training school you don't need um, a clearance if you even went to a government nursing training school and you were not sponsored you will not need a clearance but if you went to the government training school and you were sponsored you will need a clearance sometimes what happens is that because nmc Ghana doesn't know which um, batch of year was not sponsored. Do if you, if you are even still a government worker, they will still tell you that you will need a clearance because they are not sure which year was sponsored or which year was not sponsored. So it is when you go to Ministry of Health, you get your clearance cert, um, certificate. I think it is now 100 cities. Yeah. You get your clearance certificate, um, you bring it to your medical superintendent or your administrator to endorse it for you. Your HR will have to give you an introductory note or an introductory letter. Your previous uh, principal or school principal will have to endorse, um, I think, a part, yes, and then after that, you do the filling of the rest. So after that, you you will have to um, send the the field document back to um, Ministry of Health. When you are done sending it back to Ministry of Health, Ministry of Health will direct you that um, you go back to NMC Ghana in about two weeks or three weeks. They'll give you a time period where you can go back. And when you are going back, make sure that you have your um, amount with you, the amount of money you want you you. You are you have been told to pay for the validation by NMC Ghana. We have, you have to make sure you have it with you. Fortunately, there is um, an ADB bank, there is a Ghana Commercial Bank. You know, just before you get to the NMC head office, and so you can just make the payments there, and then you go and then present the the payment sheet to NMC Ghana. So over there, they will tell you that in about um, two weeks, the validation will be done. But sometimes it can be quite early. It can be as early as three to five days and as late as six weeks, you know. Wow, six good uh, weeks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So after that, what happens is that NMC UK will write to you and tell you that you have been cleared or you have been validated and so you are now ready to write the computer based test or the cbt and so they will refer you to their partners pearson view through a letter that they will send to you and then pearson view will also give you some letters and then you can just you know um, through that email go on to register with pearson view and open an account with pearson view um, you can also pay for the CBT online, or um, it's, the online is quite complicated, you know, it's quite complicated. So a lot of people actually just go to where the test of competence is written. Um, it is at Total House, Ghana. I think it's on the fourth floor. Um, that's where they write the exam. So you just go there and register for the CBT and they will help you to register for it as well. So basically, that is it for um, the writing of the CBT. So if you are done with CBT, writing CBT, you will just continue with your um, your registration process. Uh, even before um, you get clearance, or even before you are, how do I say it, you are ready to write the CBT, you can still continue with your registration process because you know it takes quite some time, you know, and you will have to 
um, have a note or um, a report from your doctor, you will need um, a police clearance form, and so you will have to go to um, the police headquarters in Accra to get a police clearance form. And then um, I think basically that is it. Yes, and then you may you may need to answer some other questions, which is in the form or which is in the registration form that will be available to you. So basically, that is it. When you are done with the CBT, then all your um, on your portal, every aspect of what is needed will be ticked green, 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 and what will just be left will be the OSCE. So. If the OSCE is the only thing which has not taken green, then it means you are ready now. So the last thing you have to do is to pay the final amount to NMC UK. I think it's about 153 pounds. And then after that, you are ready and um, yes, you are ready to move on to the next stage, which is application. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. So I would like to know, what study material do you use for your CBT? Okay, so um, I got some study materials from a friend. I don't know. <laughs> so I got uh, study materials from a friend. And I don't know where um, they got it. I don't know, <laughs> but it, it is available. You know, um, they are groups on WhatsApp, groups on Telegram, where you can be able to get some study materials as well. So um, maybe um, you can contact me. I will let you join some groups or I'll send you some links to some groups and then um, you can get some study materials from there if you want to. But it is it is quite available. It is easy to get. Um, it is quite easy to get, yes. Yeah, I'll leave Xavier's social media handle. So if you if you're interested in finding out anything about CBT, you can contact him. You can contact me. I'll contact him so that he can send whatever you are interested in. Okay, Xavier. So after getting registered with the NMC UK, how did you start applying for jobs? Did you do it by yourself or you used agencies? Can you tell us how you applied for jobs? Oh, okay. Hmm. So I started off with, um, I wanted to use agencies, but during uh, the time I, I was trying to apply, there was a restriction on agencies um, recruiting in bulk from Africa or from Ghana or from Nigeria. And so the agency I knew told me that I would have to apply by myself. But along the way, I was able to get an agency. Sorry. So along the way, I was able to get an agency. Um, I, I was able to get an interview session with them and all of that, but I was not able to go through the interview with them. So I also had a friend send me some emails, you know, um, of some trusts. And so that was how come I was able to get my trust. So I emailed all these. So what happens is that um, you can actually get emails of trust and then you email the trust. You know, the, 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 there are trust emails that accepts, you know, emails from pro prospective job applicants. And then also you can also go to the trust websites or you can go through what we call the NHS track, where all you know NHS uh, hospitals in the UK put their um, applications or their employment opportunity and vacancies there. So a lot of us have to you know be throwing in our applications on you know track jobs for some time. I mean, I had a friend who had to apply over twenty five. I heard somebody say that I've applied over a hundred. <laughs> I didn't get to a hundred. I didn't get to twenty-five, you know. But I got the opportunity through the email where I sent them them an email, and then they replied back. Um, they booked for an interview, and then 
I had the interview with them and I passed. And so I was given the offer. So that was how mine went. Okay, so how did your interviews go? Were you anxious? Were you scared? Were you confident? How did it go? Like, just tell us a little bit. Just give us some tips. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, just like any other interview, I mean, there'll be a bit of anxiety there. Yeah. Uh, there, there is a bit of, um, um, how do I say it? Um, you're wondering what to expect because I have been through uh, a first interview and it really didn't go well as I expected it to. But then I had to, you know, shake it off and then get ready for this new one that I have. And it was, it was, it was okay. The, the panel was really friendly. I was cool. I was calm. I think the, the biggest tip I can give is to smile, you know, because <laughs> smiling is my thing. And so at least when you smile, you know that you can make their patients happy, you know, or you can make their patients comfortable. So that's, that's the basic thing. But you have to know your stuff. You have to know a little about the trust you are going to. And, um, that is it. You, you, you can also get, um, help from YouTube. There are, there are general interview questions that People try to address on YouTube. You can get that information as well. And then also, if you're able to join um, these nurses, you know, preparing for um, work or preparing for interviews in the UK or nurses who are already in the UK, they have this WhatsApp group. If you're able to join, they can help you with some good tips, especially from um, the nurses who are from some particular, you know, um, trusts. Yeah. So that is how um, I was able to get my myself prepared. Um, the interview was good. The panel was great. But the biggest thing is that smile. <laughs> okay, smile. That is your secret. All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so after getting a job offer, after your interview, how long did it take to get your COS from your employer? I mean, your certificate of sponsorship, how long did it take? Okay. I think it, it depends on the trust because I have um, people complain that um, it took a long time before they, they got uh, their COS. It also took a long time for me to get my COS compared to some people because I had I had some other colleagues or some other friends who um, wanted to leave early and so they had to um, go with the COS that came first, you know, yeah. But for me, um, the trust told me that my COS would be ready in a month. And as it was getting to the end of the month that they told me, so again, they told me that um, they are sorry to not be ready and that it should be ready the next month. <laughs> You know, um, so it's disappointing, but I, I was not so anxious because I, I think they were going to do it and they did it. But I also have uh, information that some trust can disappoint. And so um, it's advised that you do a lot of interviews, um, choose the good office if they come like that. And then you wait for the trust which will give you the COS first. Or you go in for the trust which gives you the COS first. And then you can tell the other trust that, oh, you are sorry there, that um, you, you have gotten a trust from another, you know, uh, you have gotten a COS from another trust, actually. Yeah. So that's, that's, um, so mine was about two, two months. Yeah. Two months. Okay, I always give this advice to people who reach out to me that throwing lots of applications, just don't rely on one trust that, okay, I go and interview, so I'm, I'm going to get COS. Sometimes they can disappoint yeah. you. That's yeah. why again. So sometimes yeah. you just need to go in different, different applications. At the end of the day, you choose the one that you think you can work with. Yeah. yeah. 
And then also, uh, when it comes to the office, some office, you know, are not so good. Uh, and some yeah. office, you, are, you have very good office. And then you have very bad office. So you have to really Kinda. shine your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to really shine your eyes. You know, yeah. don't be too excited to come to the UK. You know, at least be, respect yourself and also go for um, something which is good because you have very good offers from, you know, uh, certain hospitals. So, so for example, in my trust, they recognize the fact that maybe you have practiced for quite some time in your home country, and so when you come to uh, when you come when when you are offered the the job opportunity, they they try to they don't put you on the same pay level as the newly qualified. They, they try to put you on the last band or the middle band, depending on how much um, years of qualification under your belt. Yeah. So, okay. so that's, that's it for my trust, you know. But a few other trusts also do the same, but it's not all the trust. But just make sure that <laughs> the offer is a good trust. <laughs> Have a good. <laughs> Just we all run to come and work day. This is interesting. I never knew. <laughs> yes, so that that's it. It's available. Some trusts do it. Some other trusts also don't do it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So to lead on to my next question. So did your employer pay for your relocation expenses, or you paid everything yourself before coming? So my employer paid for everything. Um, from the visa to the plane ticket to paying for the OSCE, and then going back as far as paying for my IELTS, paying for my CBT, paying for uh, other payments I made during the the registration year. So they actually paid for everything, I would say. So that is also you- one one um how do i say it? one key factor in a good offer you know a good offer is one which also pays some of your expenses or pays all of your expenses yeah were you offered accommodation when you got to the uk oh yes i was offered an accommodation i was offered a, a two months accommodation actually yeah i was offered, offered a two months accommodation but I ended up spending three months. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I think I spent four months. Yeah, instead of the two months, but uh, it was still for for free anyway. I didn't have to pay for for the extra two months. Yeah, because sometimes it's difficult to get you know uh, accommodation to rent. Accommodation um, is something else. Like it's difficult. Yeah. It's sometimes very difficult to get very good accommodation, maybe the one you like. And so it can take quite some time before you get what you want. And so that was how come I ended up spending four months in the accommodation you gave me. Oh, okay. So once you got into the UK, you settled in. How long did it take for you to start your OSCE? How did you train yourself? And also, how long did it take for you to get your PIN from the NMC UK? Okay. So, for training for OSCE, it depends on the trust. For our trust, what the plan is that when you come in, in the first two weeks, you are prepared theoretically for the, for the OSCE. And then the following week, you are prepared practically for the OSCE. And then after that, you can write your OSCE. So basically, it's a three weeks preparation period before you write your OSCE. For them, they, they, it is a policy that at least within the first four weeks when you come to the UK, you don't work, you don't do anything. All you do is to prepare and write the OSCE. Then after that, when the 
um, how do you call it? The pin comes out. Uh, the pin should come out in about after about um, two to three weeks after writing. Yeah, two to three weeks after writing. Or hmm. <laughs> yes, yeah. or maybe after a week or two, because you'll be told whether you have passed in in an email. And then after that, um, they will send you the pin, which which takes about a week or two, or maybe three weeks. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So now you have gotten your the fully registered nurse in the UK. Like, how do you find the job? Like, do, do, uh, how do you find the UK calling nursing in the UK? How do you find it? The UK is is quite stressful and it's not just physically but emotionally as well as compared to back home in Ghana. Back home in Ghana there are certain areas of, of, of working that is stressful. Generally the world area is not overly stressful but when in the UK it is, it is quite involving. You must know a lot of things, you must do a lot of things, you know, to keep, um, to be, to be to be excellent or to be to be um how do i say it um yes to be excellent yeah you will need to do a lot of things um, sometimes i remember um you get those times when i was working on the ward you, you get to the ward and it's like oh when the ward is busy it's like almost every time there's something to be done until it is 7 p.m when you're supposed to hand over, you know, and that can be totally crazy. You are you are eating at break and then you are planning what to do when you get out of break, what first to do, what next to do, what third thing to do, you know, just to be <laughs> sure that <laughs> just to be sure that you complete your task and that you don't leave things undone. Because if you don't leave if you leave things undone, it is detrimental to you, you know, you be seen as incapable. Yeah. So that, that's that is the difference. That is the difference. So you are always on top of your game, trying to make sure that things are done well. Yeah. And you are yeah. continually learning. There's always e-learning waiting for you to read. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that's always, always reading something new, always yeah. learning something new. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and the timing too in Ghana, normally we go for eight hour shifts either morning, afternoon, yeah. or night. But here, yeah. it's two yeah. straight morning, yeah, to morning to evening to morning. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. quite involving. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's quite involving. It involves a lot. You, you, you will have to involve everything when you go to work. And then after that, you just come over there. Ah, or sometimes when you just even step out of the hospital, you're like, ah, and that's it. We leave everything behind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Savia. So, any advice to our Ghanaian nurses or overseas nurses who have interest in working in the UK? What advice would you give to them? Ah, well, um. I think quite a lot of people are trying to come and I realize that the challenge is with um, writing the IELTS. Um, there are quite a few people who have not even written the IELTS and yet they, they feel defeated already. You cannot be defeated when you have not even attempted the battle. How, how, how can you do that? You know, so the advice is that keep trying, keep at it. Yeah, I know of people who came to the UK after writing IELTS seven times. I know somebody who I've heard of someone, I, I don't know that person, but I've heard of someone who wrote it about 10 times just to make, you know, the score for the IELTS and come. So just keep trying, keep believing, and keep working hard. And surely we will see you to here. Yeah. Okay. So our next extraordinary savior 
has spoken. <laughs> yeah, he has given us the procedures, I mean, step by step, how to start your process from Ghana and how to finally get here. So, Savia, I want to thank you for your time and your patience in explaining everything to my adorable viewers. Yeah, I hope to catch you soon. I will invite you soon yeah. again on my channel. Yeah, thank, you for, thank you for having me on your channel. Yeah. I'm so grateful. So, yeah, so to my adorable and cherished viewers, thank you for your time, family. Catch you in my next video. Bye-bye. Oh, 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 oh,